Welcome to our July 4th edition of the Nightly News. We're not having news tonight. Instead, we're having interviews. We have a new interview with Charlotte Isabee. Now, Charlotte Isabee was the former senior policy advisor under the Reagan administration at the U.S. Department of Education. And she was appalled by what she saw there. And she wrote a book that's become a classic. We carry it here at InfoWars, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. That's right, deliberate dumbing down of America by design. It's about government control. It's not about educating children. And she makes that very clear. She talks about the roots and the purposes of it. And we also have, Charlotte has recently appeared in State of Mind, which is a new documentary that we're going to be shipping here July 17th. You can pre-book it now. InfoWars is going to have an exclusive on that for about three months. And she talks about education in that documentary as well, because, you know, mind control is really about broadly applied psyops and education is probably the easiest way for them to do that. And we also have her uh, new booklet that is coming back. It was being reprinted after being out of print for quite some time. And it is about uh, back to basics reform or outcomes based education, Skinnerian International Curriculum. So we're going to talk to her about those older classic titles, her new resources, a new video that she's working on right now that's going to be coming out in September, as well as this new documentary, State of Mind. Welcome, Charlotte. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I've seen you many times on YouTube and with Alex. It's, it's great to talk to you. Well, thank you, David. I'm, I'm very nice to, uh, hearing your voice. I don't think I've ever been interviewed by you before. So Yeah, this is this the first is time we've first, talked. Not our last, I hope. That's right. I now, I just saw a clip of you from a new documentary that we're going to be selling here, State of Mind. If you remember that, you talked to the filmmakers just yes. a little while ago. And yes. uh, that's going to be shipping on <laughs> July 17th. We're pre-booking it now. We're going to have an exclusive on it for three months, I believe, at InfoWarsStore.com. But yep. you had some really interesting things to say about education. And when we're talking about mind control... I thought it was very important that the makers of that documentary incorporate education into it. Let's take a look at that clip real quick and we'll talk about it after we get back. The education our children is, are going to get has nothing to do with education. It is training uh, our children to be uh, resources, human resources, that's the way they refer to us, to spin off profits for the globalists. The greatest barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge, and that's what the 15,000 hours in compulsory schooling really entrains in, in and conditions into us, is that you've been told this story of the people in South America, and so you think you know about it. And it's not until later in life when you might come across more information about conquistadors and how Jesuits infiltrated all their religious systems and, and took all the riches out and basically harvested this whole area. This is an example of plunder in South America that went on for hundreds of years. So until you have this other piece of information to bring this into focus, you think that what you were taught in public schooling during that 15,000 hours is really what's going on. And it's not until you bump up to, against reality, as George Orwell said, on a, usually on a battlefield, that you have to consider that which you were taught to believe versus the objective evidence that exists. John Taylor Gatto was an award-winning educator in New York who took kids that couldn't even read or write or headed for prison and made them top level students. And then he discovered that he was shut down by the big tax-free foundations so that he couldn't teach the children this information. And he discovered that it was by design that they were dumbing people down to make them subservient biological androids or replicants. That's what we're seen as. But now we're obsolete. We're to be phased down the new robotic systems, the drone aircraft, the drone submarines, the drone ships the drone robots on the ground. We're all being conditioned, all being acclimated for this. So I, th I thought it was very fascinating that they, that they covered that. And of course, in the documentary, they're making the point that mind control isn't just about the high-tech, covert things that we've been hearing about since World War II. It really has ancient roots, and those roots are really most dangerous when they're put down in our educational system, aren't they? They're extremely dangerous, and uh, it's not only persons like myself uh, and some teachers and, um, you know, uh, activists and people in the universities, a few of them, right, who object to the mind control. 
especially to the computer. Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a point here because everything's computers now. They're getting rid of books in the schools. Everything will be computerized through the computer with the software. And when I leaked uh, the project BEST, Better Education Skills Through Technology, uh, when I was working under uh, in the Reagan administration in the Office of Educational Research and Improvement, I leaked that grant, which went out to all the states, and it was software in every area of curriculum and federally funded. Can you imagine? This yeah. was way back in 1981. That's right. And the, the important thing that I want to say here is that the, the um, person applying for the money from my office was with the Association for Education, Computing, and Technology. His name was Donald Ely. And it was a terribly important grant. And uh, you know, it's, I sort of laugh when I, – I don't laugh at the people who are worrying about Common Core. You know, that's all right. It's really Communist Core. That's what it is. But right. – Communist Core started in 1971, came out of the Northwest Regional Laboratory in Portland, Oregon. So it would be better, that's a diversion. Communist Core is a diversion. And in the first place, and please, I don't mean to be diverting you at the moment, but uh, one has to remember that uh, the most important thing that we're dealing with right now is on elected boards, charter schools. Mm -hmm. Now, the diversion here is there. you've got all these wonderful people checking on math standards, English standards, et cetera. Don't worry, I'm going to get back to the project best, too. Uh, and trying to decide whether they're academically sound. This is ridiculous. You know why? How's that? Look, even if the standards were teaching the Ten Commandments, it's wrong because it's a federal curriculum. That's right. And the fact that these wonderful parents and activists are spending 25 hours a day checking the standards to see if they like them is in effect an admission that they accept the federal government's developing the standards. That's right. That's the key thing is the control. And, you know, we're uh, never going to have control absolutely. if we allow the federal government to do it. And the way they well, do it isn't just through the purse strings. Of course, they have a lot of control that way. But right. the way they really do it is through the tests, because if they it's, define it's, tests, it's, everybody is so scared that right. their kids aren't going to do well on the test. So the tests then define the curriculum. And, absolutely. Uh, assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that happens whether it's a a government school or whether it's a private school because the private schools oh, yeah. want, the, want to test well. And, you know, we homeschooled our children, and it even affects a lot of the homeschoolers because they're so concerned about making sure that their kids perform well on a, on a test when really what, they're really what those grades are, those test scores are really, it's just like handing out a, a medal to a soldier who's had both of his legs blown off. It really doesn't matter what that curriculum is if you if you don't know what you want your children to learn. And that's why we would look at what they were teaching the children, and sometimes we would teach them that. Sometimes we would teach them a lot of stuff that was very different, and we didn't really worry about the tests at all. Well, yeah, you, you don't have to, but the test is terribly important when you're dealing with, for instance, I, I just want to go back to uh, this, this diversion. Uh, what's happened is you've got this huge percentage of parents out there who are fighting the communist core, uh, and the, the act that they're fighting it, and they're, it means that they're recognizing the right of the federal government to yes. have designed this. And yes. now let me make a point here. They're, we're being lied to on this, and I want to get all, I don't want to talk about Common Core tonight, but I do want people to hear this. Uh, the, the fact that uh, they're, they're being told that the uh, Council of Chief State School Officers that designed uh, the test test items uh, is is not federally funded. Mm -hmm. it's a joke. It is a powerful, powerful council. It receives federal money from my office. At, at, uh, in 1981, 1982, I saw the grants all going out for development of test, textbooks, everything. Hmm? So it is a federal curriculum that is being imposed. That's the communist core. Mm -hmm. But we've had this. For at least 30 years, we've had a national curriculum, but we didn't have the computers. Right. And that's what now, that's why I want to get back 
to the computer, the danger of the computer. The, the, the national curriculum, bad enough, but with a computer for learning and for assessment, uh, this, this, I'm going to give you a quote from the very person, Donald Ely, who headed up the Project Best that I leaked. Uh, I went back to the archives for an old grant that he had gotten 10 years earlier. And that association is connected with the NEA. Mm -hmm. It's technology, right? Mm -hmm. And I got into the grants and I found a very, very important paper that he had referred to in order to get the Project Best money, right? He had to refer to other things that he had done. It was a study that was done by leading computer scientists in around 1970, I think, on software, the development of software. And they spent two years working on this, 300 of them. And then they had a conference and they put it all together in a paper. And the most important part of that paper, it's in my book, The Deliberate Dummy Down of America, this, this particular uh, paper, I mean, part of it, because I don't have the whole thing. Right. Uh, Donald Ely said, you don't have to be a liberal or conservative, he said. But when you're developing software, you have to have a conscience because it is that powerful. Hmm. Now, considering the fact that we've got curriculum that has been developed by, you know, Marzano and, and Paulo Freire out of Brazil, a noted communist, right? Uh, I mean, Paulo Freire, you know, he teaches math for first graders. Uh, you know, with um, uh, military stuff, you know, uh, grenades and things. They they count <laughs> grenades. Right. right. Now, everybody's wondering what the critical thinking curriculum is. They they really think it's a good curriculum, I guess. They're trying to find out. Look, they've got to, tr they've got to get rid of the whole thing. Uh, communist core, but the, the best way to go after this is to strike after the charter schools. Mm -hmm. it's and that, that's interesting that you would say that because so many conservatives believe that charter schools are the way to go because it introduces an element of choice into what is otherwise this bureaucratic top-down structure. They see that as choice as being a local, an element of local control. Can you address that? Well, they're lying to the people because charter schools are public schools. Mm -hmm. There's right. no difference between the only difference, and it's a major horrible difference, which I want to discuss because I believe it is the devolution of our representative form of government through charter schools, and I will discuss that. Uh, the major difference, the only major difference, is one thing is that the, the test scores are way down with charter schools compared to the public school. Now, you must be surprised that someone who's written a 700-page book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, would be defending the public schools. <laughs> but I am because the test scores are better in the public schools than in the charter schools. And I hope parents will listen to that. Mm -hmm. But the major thing is they don't have elected boards. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that if parents are upset about whatever, you know, there are all sorts of things, global education, sex education, drug, bullying, whatever, you know, they're unhappy. Good reason. Who, where do they go? They don't have anybody to go to. To, to to complain, and then they don't even have anybody to vote for or to get rid of. Right. This is very, very serious. You see, I mean, in, in the uh, trailer that we have, which we put together for our uh, Global Road to Ruin Through Education video set, the conference last August of leading researchers in this country it was closed to the public, teachers, public school teachers as well, administrators, Samuel Blumenfeld was one of them that came in. Um, you know, uh, we discussed this. Uh, this charter school thing is very, very dangerous. Let me point out, the uh, education at the federal level is only second to defense in spending, mm -hmm. discretionary. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's, that's not even adding the property tax and everything else that we pay, right? Second. So if we allow... Uh, education to have it, the elected board stripped from it across the country through charter schools, 
Uh, I believe, uh, and, and I'm not alone here at all. I mean, there are many people who've thought this thing out. But, uh, of course, the Heritage Foundation and all the neoconservative groups are supporting this because they, they support the school-to-work agenda, the Soviet polytech system. Right. Heritage Foundation, you know, drafted the North American Free Trade Agreement. Right. Did you know I, that? I think I think I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, but well, I think... they had to. They had to have it. And once they get that, then they then they have to have the school to work. And right. if you're going to have school to work, you have to destroy the traditional public education system. You cannot have K through 12. You can't have A B C D. You've got to have individual education plans. And you've got to use the Skinner method. That's for workforce training. Right, right. And that's Absolutely. why that's why they have deliberately just are in the process of destroying. I'm not defending the public school system, folks. Re mm -hmm. Remember that. I'm defending the hierarchical structure of our once magnificent public school system. It must be restored. That is my message. Oh, aren't people surprised that Charlotte Isserbeek would be calling for that because the options are lethal. Charter schools are lethal. Tax-funded private education, including religious, which is what our governor is pushing for, hmm? mm -hmm. is lethal. Because if you take one penny from the federal government, you teach the corporate fascist curriculum, which is the Soviet polytech school to work. That's right. If they if they fund it, they're going to control it. That's right. So yeah. people who are, oh, they're so excited about school choice. Why don't they find, figure out what is school choice? It's not school choice. It's no choice. If they get their tax supported school choice implemented, that is the death of private education. So let's if talk. About, let's, let's pull it back and talk a little bit about it, because I'm curious to see what your solution is. I mean, I think one of the reasons that so many conservatives are going for the charter school is because they see a couple of issues. Number one, they see that control has devolved. First, it went from the parents to the community, then to the state, now to the federal government. And they're trying to get the control back to a local community where the parents can have some say for it. And so that's a, that's a noble goal. And I think they see that happening with this. But as we also pointed out, there is this systemic design and the very fact that government is involved really at any level with education. There's this design that goes back to Plato's Republic where the government wants to control the kids from as early an age as possible. And it's really kind of like as we started out with the documentary State of Mind, talking about how they're trying to use it as an instrument of mind control, a very effective well, it, instrument of mind control. It, it is. Uh, it is, but you, they, have to, they have to understand that uh, the government... Any, any, I was in the U.S. Department of Ed in the Office of Education Research and Improvement. I spent time going over grants, right? And this project best that I leaked, I don't know which reason I really leaked it most for. The one I just mentioned to you about uh, the curriculum software going out to every state. Uh, or I, there was a doc, there was a page in there marked, excuse me, confidential. Hmm? Confidential. It's mm -hmm. not the CIA, is it? <laughs> and uh, it said, and I'm not kidding you, uh, this is for people out there who think they could take a penny in services, you know, art. And it, a lot of homeschoolers, they want to participate in the services of the public yeah, school. Absolutely. Don't go, don't That's a trap. go near it. That's a trap. Absolutely. It's, don't go near it. It mm -hmm. said on this document, uh, Project Best, what we can control and manipulate at the local level. Mm -hmm. And then it listed the selection of people for the task forces, the curriculum content. All right, I don't have to go on any further. Right. I saw that. I've been a local school board member. I saw that. I knew things were bad, even when I was on the board. I never accepted a penny. I've never voted for a penny of federal money when I was on the local school board. But, mm -hmm. you know, even I, when I saw that in writing in my office, which was the most important office in the world— dealing with education. I want people to know that. Mm -hmm. Office of Educational Research and Improvement, connected with UNESCO, connected with the OECD, connected with the UN. And by the way, I just want to make a little comment here. When people think about all of this curriculum and everything, and why is it so rotten? Well, UNESCO, in 1971, 
of 20 advisors, 19 came from communist Eastern Europe Hmm. and the Soviet Union. This is a Marxist curriculum. My office was a Marxist office. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ronald Reagan made things worse when he he carried out the public-private partnerships, which is corporate fascism. That had to be done in order to put the school to work in, right? Right. Well, you know, you went you went to work at the Department of Education at the beginning of the Reagan administration. It had just been started under Jimmy Carter. And one of the things that Reagan campaigned for, if I remember correctly, was to basically get rid of the Department of Education. But it grew by leaps and bounds under Reagan. Well, everything that is going on right now, that's why my little book, Back to Basics, is so important that you're going to be pushing, I hope. Yes. Uh, that, that little book written in 1985, Back to Basics Reform, a Scenario and International Curriculum Necessary for United States Participation in a One World Socialist Government, scheduled for the year, early years of the 21st mm-hmm. century. Incredible book. Everything in it is happening right this minute. Yes. It could have been written tomorrow. I told the American people what was going to happen. It was boycotted by every major conservative organization in this country. And looking at the title of that, when you talk about Skinnerian International Curriculum, I got to tell you, my wife has a master's degree in education. She taught for a short period of time in the system. And I remember when she was in college and she brought home B.F. Skinner's book, Beyond Freedom and Dignity. And I looked at that and it's like, and my first response was, it's about time somebody talked about how they're crushing freedom and dignity in the schools. And she said, oh, no, you don't understand. <laughs> He's advocating completely eliminating freedom and dignity. And that's what we see. We've seen that conditioning. And that's a good example because we've seen Skinnerian conditioning, uh, conditioning from this psychiatrist, psychologist, B.F. Skinner. We've seen that kind of conditioning applied to the masses in school for decades. And now we see it being done in the population at large via the TSA. Perfect example of positive operant conditioning where you come in and you subject to letting them put their hands all over you, just like the horse whisperer, right? Or the dog whisperer, you know, this is the uh, airplane traveler whisperer, you know, where they come in and, and you be a good boy or girl, you let me touch you wherever I want, do whatever I want to do, and you get rewarded with a treat. You immediately get to get on the plane. If not, oh, yeah. you get put in time out over here. Or maybe you might get, if you really are bad, you might get some negative operant conditioning. You know, you might get tasered, you might get arrested, whatever. But that's the conditioning right there. You do what I tell you to do, and you get the positive reinforcement. They've been doing that to kids for quite some time, and a lot of people don't realize that as they moved to Skinner's emphasis on operant, positive operant conditioning, that's when they started getting rid of things like grades and stuff like that because they just wanted to give people positive reinforcements. Well, no, but the getting rid of the grades is putting the, in the Soviet education mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. They don't have grades there. That's they right. don't have competition. They right. have Pavlov. They study Darwin, and it's polytechnical. Mm-hmm. And I know that it is the Soviet education system that we're putting in because a, a team of American educators went to the Soviet Union after Eisenhower signed the first agreement with Khrushchev in 1958, and they came back. And that study is at my my son's website, AmericanDeception.com. Uh, the Soviet educators, I mean, the American educators came back, and th- it's really incredible that there's this report that they did. They've got pictures in it and everything, and you can just tick off every single thing in that book is what is being put in right now. Now, people are going to say, oh, no, that's, you know, but that's true. Now, let me let me go back to 1934, my, the little black blue book. I've got it right in front of me here. Conclusions and recommendations for the social studies. Hmm? Can you see that? Hold it up to the uh, camera. Hold it up a little bit higher, Charlotte. Yep. Um, yeah, hold it up just a little bit higher. Yeah. We're kind of, the camera is quite a bit above you, so we're getting a lot of the top of your head, too. So And pull it back a little bit. Better. That's good. Okay, we can see that. That's good. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, there's nothing new about this. Outcomes-based education, which is Skinner, mastery learning, performance-based. Whenever you hear performance, that's Skinner. Results-based, outcomes-based, competency-based, and effective schools. Now, people think this is new, just like they think that the communist core is new. It's not. This is not new. I'm going to read something to you from this book. Uh In 1934, this was published in 1934, uh, after, actually, after the initiation of a project entitled The Eight-Year Study, Carnegie. 
The eight-year study was the pilot for outcomes-based education. They, they, with, they took away the Carnegie units. They took away all the grades, K through 12. They took everything away. No competition. This was all because these guys had been back and forth to the Soviet Union. They wanted to put in the Soviet system then. Outcomes-based education is the Soviet system, mm -hmm. period. Okay? In fact, a defector, I found a piece of paper. I can't find that guy. I can't find the piece of paper either where a Soviet defector said OBE is the Soviet system. Right. So, but that's Pavlov. OBE is mastery learning. It's direct instruction. Uh, it's it's those two basically are the words that we 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 know. mastery learning, direct instruction, OBE. Now, in in 1916, I'm reading from this book. This horrible little book. Uh, rather, 1934. Uh, it says here. Conclusions and Recommendations for the Social Studies. This little book published by Carnegie was considered by a British socialist to be a plan, the plan for a socialist America. Now, let me point out that because people are going to say, oh, no, it's dead. It's all, you know, I no. Look, she, they said she's an old lady. She's talking about 1934. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, really? Every five years this minute and probably tomorrow too, Carnegie has put millions of dollars into the National Assessment, the Educational Commission of the States, uh, the, the everything you can imagine, all the school to work, Mark Tucker, Rochester, New York, uh, working with Bill Gates, et cetera, moving into, into up until 2013. It's their plan to change our form of economy to a planned economy. Now, this little, okay, this little book, here we go, 1934. Under the molding influence of socialized processes of living, drives of technology and science, pressures of changing thought and policy, and disrupting impacts of economic disaster, how do you like that one, hmm? there is a notable waning of the once widespread popular faith in economic individualism. And leaders in public affairs, supported by a growing mass of the population, are demanding the introduction into economy of ever wider measures of planning and control. Now, nine, cumulative evidence supports the conclusion that in the United States, as in other countries, the age of individualism and laissez-faire in economy and government is closing, and that a new age of collectivism is emerging. As to the specific form which this collectivism, this integration and interdependence is taking and will take in the future, the, the evidence at hand is by no means clear or unequivocal. It may involve the limiting, and listen to this, think of Rosa Corey and all the wonderful people out there in the Bay Area fighting sustainable development, UN Agenda 21. Regionalism is communism. I know that. I have a quote from a communist in the Communist Daily World to that effect, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, it may involve the limiting or supplanting of private property by public property, or it may entail the preservation of private property extended and distributed among the masses. Most likely it will issue from a process of experimentation and will represent a composite of historic doctrines and social conceptions yet to appear. Almost certainly it will involve a large or measure of compulsory as well as voluntary cooperation of citizens in the conduct of the complex national economy, a corresponding enlargement of the functions of government, and an increasing state intervention in fundamental branches of economy previously left to individual discretion and initiative, a state intervention that in some instances may be direct and mandatory and in others indirect and facilitative. In any event, the commission is convinced by its interpretation of available empirical data that the actually integrating economy of the present day is the forerunner of a consciously integrated society in which individual economic actions and individual property rights will be altered and abridged. That's right. Now, and that is going in right now, folks. It's been worked on ever since 1933 or earlier. It's the communist system If people want to say, no, I can see all those people writing notes in, in YouTube, right, if this gets up there. Oh, you know, she's just an old lady. She doesn't know the wall came down. Oh, baloney. It did not, you know. it's It jumped the ocean. Yeah, it's worse here than there. We've got it bad. We've got a big disease with a C on it. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes back even it goes back even to the people that are celebrated as the founders of our government school system, Horace Mann and 
Thomas Dewey, they were looking at the same things that Plato was looking at, and that is, how do we train the children to do what the state wants them to do, rather than having them be trained by their parents? <clears throat> Well, that's 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 very true. But I think you have to go back. You know, we can go back to what well, Thomas Mann and 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 Dewey was the worst. Eighteen ninety eight, John Dewey. You know, he Charlotte, actually. Charlotte, let me uh, tell you. Yeah. Can, yeah back up. What? We want to get a little bit wider shot of you there too. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, they had problems. Yeah. They tried to get these utopian communities to work in the mid eighteen hundreds, and they were failing. And they came back and they said, you know, we can't. The reason we can't get our our communist system to work is because the parents are undermining our values that we're trying to instill in the, you know, they haven't been trained from an early enough age to take on this communist mindset. So we have to get the kids at an earlier age and train them in that way. So it's well, kind of a the, systemic. It was mostly the open classroom and the, the, uh, the, the trailer that we have, that I hope your people will uh, go to YouTube and look at that trailer because it's Samuel Blumenfeld, who's the expert on the history of this thing. Mm -hmm. He talks about 1898 and John Dewey, and uh, he was the the, fa the father of the deliberate dumbing down of America. And Dewey, Dewey believed in Skinner, and of course it was... Uh, you know the uh, the order at Yale actually that sent the the educators over to right. Leipzig, right, to study under Wilhelm Wundt. Wilhelm Wundt, well, actually Pavlov studied under Wundt, and uh, that's where they were trained. And uh, G. Stanley Hall was the first one to go over there and brought back this wretched method, uh, dog training, operant conditioning. Mm -hmm. And the very sad thing has happened in the United States. In order for them uh, to implement this school-to-work system, which has been the goal ever since 1934, right, to change our economy, to, to change from academics to workforce training, where the children will have no upward mobility at all. And, uh, you know, Professor Boyce at the University of Georgia, he, he put it well. He said, in communist countries, uh, they do not educate for jobs that don't exist, right? So <laughs> our children will have absolutely no upward mobility. Right. But uh, what what has happened is that it's been ex through the years and through the agreements that Ronald Reagan signed with Gorbachev in 1985 that merged the two systems. And Carnegie Corporation signed agreements at the same time with the Soviet Academy of Science uh, in the area of critical thinking for, for, for early elementary school children. Well, if so, you look what look up critical thinking, not critical, so, but Lenin on thinking. Hang, Lenin hang on a on second. Thinking. Hang on a second, Charlotte. Yeah. Now, what what was it that Reagan signed with Gorbachev in 1985? Can you can you tell the audience that? A little? Extensive agreements. It's in in my book and mm -hmm. uh, the deliberate dumbing down of America. Very extensive agreements were signed between the two countries uh, to merge everything: their curriculum, teachers going back and forth, uh, you name it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's. You know, you got to just go Google U.S. Soviet education agreements or Google a super little article I wrote. It's at my website, too, as a PDF. It's called uh, Soviets in the Classroom, America's Latest Education Fad. Okay. And I wrote that, and that was boycotted by the conservatives as well. Mm -hmm. And And interestingly enough, four years after the fact, we raised five thousand dollars to put an ad in the Washington Times to alert people to what had happened. Uh, but four years after the fact, a wonderful friend of mine, Robert Morris, he's dead now. He was a judge from New Jersey and a leading conservative, and he was he was the counsel for the House Committee on Un-American Activities, and he he questioned all of the communists back in the fifties and sixties, close to Bella Dodd. And uh, he became the head of America's future. I had sent my article, Soviets in the Classroom, to America's Future, hoping it would get published. I can't tell you how many organizations I sent that to. Nobody would touch it. Well, Morris found it in the drawer when he became the president of America's Future because Rudy Scott had left. And he called me. And he said, what is this? <laughs> And I said, yeah, this is what Ronald Reagan did. Thanks. Hmm? Yeah. And then went ahead and signed another agreement in 1989. I guess that was under Reagan was out by then, wouldn't he be? Yeah. Another, mm -hmm. what did you hear about this? This agreement wasn't quite as bad for curriculum and all, but you know what it called for? Putting statues of Soviet cultural figures up on, on American property. Hmm. Yeah, ha ha. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, that's what bothers you know what bothers me so much is 
people pro out there are probably saying that, well, you know what they said when, when uh, they, boycott, they boycotted my book. And uh, they, you know what they said? The reason I wrote the book, this, this came out of leading conservatives' mouths. Oh, she's just sour grapes because she got fired from her job. Hmm. And I say, oh, <laughs> uh, were you with me when I looked at that project, Better Education Skills Through Technology, and the thing I just read to you, what we can control and manipulate? Were you with me when I made up my mind to leak that document? Right. You well, think you know, I didn't know I was going to get fired? Th there's a lot of us who wish that Reagan had fired the entire Department of Education. It was something that was, you know, it's kind of like these these government departments that they create uh, take on a life of their own and basically live eternally, like some kind of a well, he, strange he could, corporation. We have done it, and it's a long story that one. And the head of the National Institute of Education was professional educator, sort of apolitical, wonderful man, uh, Ed Curran. Uh, he was head of the NIE, where all the grants go out all over the world, folks. You know, not just to change America's classical education system, but they go into Thailand. They go everywhere all around the world, our change agents, spending your tax money to change their curriculum. Okay. So anyway, uh, Curran, he saw what I saw, and uh, he wrote a letter to the president recommending that his own office be abolished. Okay. And... Um, so uh, what happened, Reagan was out of the country. Uh, people, Dick Dorman or whoever it was in the White House, they sent that letter over to uh, Terrell Bell, the Secretary of Education in the department. They sent the letter over there. And Bell fired this wonderful educator who had been the headmaster of the Cathedral School for Girls in Washington. Mm -hmm. Wonderful man. He knew, he understood Skinner too, completely. Mm -hmm. And he knew that that whole NIE was based on Marxism and Skinner. And he said, get rid of my office. I don't want my job. I want this place to go down. If it had gone down, the department would have gone down, too. Now, what what happened is Reagan comes back in and he lets it stand. He lets Ed Curran be fired. Mm -hmm. He should have he should have fired the Secretary of Education, Ted Bell, who was a you-know-what, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, he should have, should have fired him, put Ed Curran in the Secretary of Education. The whole building would have come down. Yeah. yeah. This is a story most people do not know. And, and you know, I've, I'm so angry <laughs> about it because I'll tell you another thing that makes me the angriest is that every single thing that, I'm, that, that, that came out of my office is going in right now. But you know who suffered the most from this? Who's that? The minorities, again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that I wrote about it. It's at my website under PDFs. It's an article called Experimentation on Minorities. Well, the first time they, they experimented went, on... Let me finish uh -huh. with this. They, let, they went into every single inner city school in this country starting in 1968 with the Skinner Method, mastery learning, getting rid of grades. They experimented with all of these different schools all over in inner cities, and this is all documented. James Vaught, very high up, he says he doesn't know of a single inner city school that didn't have it. Over a period of 40 years, they, they experimented with a system that's now going in for all our children. Okay, get rid of grades, right? Continuous improvement, Skinner method, no A, B, C, D, no K through 12, Mm -hmm. This is necessary for workforce training. All right. So they use, and then, okay, so the inner city school kids test scores drop. Everybody talks about it. So they put more money into it. Oh boy, yummy, <laughs> yummy. Put more money in. They knew what they were doing. And if you read my article, Experimentation on Minorities, you're going to see that there were some fellows evaluating who were from the Department of Ed, those very projects in the inner city. And they even dared to say the test scores may not have improved very much, but but we managed to uh, reorganize the system a bit. Huh? Right. Maybe the kids control. can't read. Uh, Thomas Stick with Spady put the system in into the Washington, D.C. schools. You know, uh, Skinner, I can make a pigeon a high achiever by reinforcing on a proper schedule. Stick said after that failure, where the Washington, D.C. schools went down the tube, said, Oh, you know, perhaps it was more important to uh, uh, get rid of discrimination and uh, change values 
and are you sitting down? <laughs> than to yeah. teach reading right. in right. getting low-income people into the middle class. Now, if that doesn't make people mad, I think I am a different person on this planet because I am furious. I'm furious with that. Not just the money spent, but that these inner city minority children were experimented on to that extent by these rotten people, including the Heritage Foundation and all. all right. The conservatives who love this, they just love this method for Jackson, Mississippi and New Orleans. And I mean, it absolutely drives me crazy. And how many of these children now are on drugs, in jail, can't read? And everybody says, oh, you know, it's, it's, we've got to throw more money to help the minorities. Well, they, well took their, they took their academic education system away from them. And now that they got it perfected, this is the key for people mm-hmm. to listen. Mm-hmm. It's perfected now. They're giving it to us with charter schools. The same system. Right. Okay. That's that's the, that's the important takeaway is for people to pay attention to what's happening with charter schools. And you're talking about how they went after the inner city minorities. You know, they used schools and boarding schools as an instrument of control uh, for the Indians, for the Native Americans uh, oh, yeah. back in the 1800s. So the, the real simple. key here is is for people to realize just how government is using the education system as a as an instrument of control. It's not about letting Johnny read. You know, parents wonder why Johnny can't read. That's not really the goal of the government. The goal of the government, as you pointed him. out, that's right. They don't, they don't want, want him to read. read. And that's, that's what's so good. Do anything. That's right. I have a, a teacher friend. She, she quit after she had to go through the experiments with mastery learning down in Arizona in the early 80s. And she had to, you know, and she had, she finally quit because they, they were modifying her behavior. Like Ethna Reed, this horrible program that spread across the country. I've just been talking about it. But she said, you know, all you really need is a stick. You take the child by the hand and go down to the beach. You can teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with a stick in the sand. That's right. You That's know right. because you homeschool. That's right. Absolutely. That's the way we did it. Well, I really love you. Let's let's go back and, and go through these resources that you've got here. Of course, you've got the deliberate dumbing down of America, and that's a real key thing because just as we've been talking about, it's not that the government is incompetent. I mean, we hear this on everything. It's like, uh, well, you know, we're making mistakes, we're incompetent, but you know, if you just give us more money, I'm sure we can do a better job, right? But it's a deliberate program to dumb down America. We've got that available at the InfoWarsStore.com. And also, you've got this booklet that hasn't been in print for quite some time. We're going to be getting that in to sell that. That's the one that Back to Basics Reform, or OBE, Scenarian International right. Curriculum. Yeah, and you'll have that on Thursday. They yes. will ship today. That's yep. right. So that's going to be up on the uh, InfoWarsStore.com, and that's been out of print for quite some time, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I had a few around here, but lately, everybody, few people got a hold of it, and they said, this is unbelievable. This is what we're fighting now. Right. How, is is right. this what happened when you, and I say, yes, if that book had gotten out, if it hadn't been boycotted mm-hmm. by the, you know, the usual suspects, you know, hmm, that what we call them. Mm-hmm. But I always say, a false friend is more dangerous than an open enemy. That's and right. our false friend is the conservative movement. <clears throat> and I hate to say it because... I've I've worked so hard for that movement uh, all my life, hmm? and mm-hmm. I have to say it now. Uh, what they want is to keep all of us Americans separated, divide and conquer, and keep the liberals from ever talking with the conservatives, so called. Let's drop labels. Let's sit down together, and we're going to find out that we. On both sides, there'll be differences of opinion, but basically, we all want to hold on our to our freedoms. And they, up in Rockefeller Center, when they have their meetings once a month, you know very well that the first thing they say is they haven't figured it out yet, have they? That's right. We have managed Absolutely. to divide and conquer by calling them Republicans and Democrats and left and right. And, and I would think I would think the people should realize by now that the Republican Party, the so-called conservative movement, is not about making government small at all. It's not about giving, it has, they absolutely do not care about any personal freedoms. The only thing that they ever talk about are fiscal issues. The only thing they ever talk about is money because they're so super obsessed with money. Money, And it's money money. money that they're going to control, money that they're going to make. They don't care about making the majority of people wealthy. They want 
to concentrate wealth in a That's few right. hands, but they, they present themselves with an entirely different agenda. And after a period of time, you start to realize that they're just, you wonder for a while, why aren't they following through on what they campaign for? And then after a while, you start to realize that they never had any intention of doing that at all. It was just a very sophisticated control technique. Well, I'm, I'm afraid it's so sad that good people don't really run anymore because they know that they ha they're going to be uh, completely yeah. outnumbered. And and you know that the time comes when you have to compromise. Uh, yeah, and, and actually, I can understand that a little bit. You know, I've been I'm very pro life, so you know, if I if I had to compromise on a fiscal bill in order to get a pro life bill passed, I would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is always that that uh, difficulty uh, for political officers, but but they, they've made it such a cushy job, too. That, that should just be, they really ought to get rid of all the benefits that they give to these congressmen, plus their salaries. Maybe oh, yeah. it would be less attractive to them, and we might be able to uh, induce uh, really good people to, to run for office again. Well, that's just but, a manifestation of the corruption that's there. But let's talk about this last resource that you've got there, which is the Global Road to Ruin Through Education. That's a four-disc documentary. Is that available yet? I know the trailer is up on YouTube. Is, is that available for sale yet? Uh, that will be, hopefully, the 1st of September. It's okay. been a walk project because it morphed from being mainly uh, two days of videotaping of all of these talks from uh, researchers and educators in public education. It was great. We have public educators on that, which is super. Uh, and uh, some of them go back to the late 60s, mm -hmm. some of our brilliant researchers. And uh, then we have some younger public school teachers who tell exactly what's going on. And uh, we deal a great deal with the charter school and school choice and mm -hmm. our tremendous concerns about school choice. And uh, we, we, we talk, we speak uh, out to the global community. I mean, at one point, I apologize, you know, to the rest of the world for the <laughs> role of the United States in funding all of these change agents to go all over the world Absolutely. to tear down their academic classical education system. I say, I have to apologize to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad well, this is one reason why we did the video. So the rest of the world will understand exactly what is happening. And we quote C.S. Lewis, you know, where he says when... Uh, Education is beaten by training. That's right. Civilization dies. That's right. And that is a very important thing for Americans to think of. If we're just going to have training on the computer, and as I mentioned earlier with Donald Ely's quote about you've got to have a conscience when you develop the software, and B.F. Skinner, you know, uh, no, Benjamin Bloom, he said the purpose of education. Benjamin Bloom, all teachers have to go through. Your wife knows that. Mm -hmm. The purpose of education is to change the thoughts, actions, and feelings of students and define good teaching as challenging the students' fixed beliefs. Now, that's communist, <laughs> that's communist core. That's right. And, and Bloom said, and this refers back to the quote by Donald Ely that, earlier on that I mentioned, that big conference of computer scientists, Bloom said, I can take a student from here to there in their views, right, or opinions or beliefs in one hour. Mm -hmm. Now, with a computer, I mean, Skinner, you know, I can make a pigeon a high achiever by reinforcing it on a proper schedule. Hmm? That's right. Look, our children are not animals. It's, it's absolutely criminal. They did it to the minorities first, and I say it was criminal enough. Yeah. It was totally criminal. And c can you imagine if they hadn't done this to the minorities? I'm not saying they'd all be Phi Delta Kappa, whatever it be. But I am saying that they would they would be well educated and they wouldn't have to go into these low level jobs that they've got planned all over the country through charter schools. That's right. Well, charter the technique schools. is to go in and get a small group of people, uh, whether it's the Indians or whether it's inner city minorities or whatever, get a small group of people that nobody's really going to look out for. Nobody really understands what's going on. Right. They can they can do yeah. their experimentations on these right. people, and yeah. then they can apply them to everybody else. It's going back to what Martin Niemöller said about the Nazis. You know, first they came yes. for that group, and I did nothing because I wasn't yeah. a member of that group. Then they came yes. for this other group. Finally, they came for me. Right. That's exactly what we've seen happen with education. It's a very right. deliberate plan. That's why right. your book is such a classic, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. We're really excited to get the booklet that is coming back into print for the first time. That'll be in here at the end of this week. 
And we're looking forward to seeing your documentary that's coming out in September. And people can see that trailer on YouTube, right? Yeah, and uh, we're getting lots of hits uh, on the trailer. And the nicest thing is I'm getting emails from educators uh, to the effect that they didn't know there were people out there that understood really what was happening. Yes, yes. And, and you know, I just want to make this point again. People say, solutions? What's the solution? Oh, my goodness. I said it earlier, but it was couched in warm fuzzies. Hmm? The solution is to go up against the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Strike it. Mm -hmm. Get rid of everything in the U.S. Department of Education except uh, minor little things. We want to keep a little bit of it because because the Department of Ed, we still can go to Congress and keep uh, an eye on what they're doing. If we if we get rid of the Department of Ed now, I always wanted to get rid of it, but we didn't do that. Huh? But if we get rid of it now, what I can see is there – the change agents are talking about moving education back to the local level mm-hmm. and, you know, moving the money back. Oh, it sounds so good, doesn't it? Oh, oh, watch out. You know why? Look, where are the corporations? They're not in Washington, are they? They're right. at the local level, right? right. So they're going to move everything back so the corporations will have everything that they need, including our tax money that we pay. Mm -hmm. to train their workers. That's something nobody ever mentioned, did they? Since when does the American taxpayer have to pay for the training of the corporation's workers? Absolutely. And that's the the measurement of of their success whenever they talk about education. It's like, you know, we need a, when you watch the debates, you know, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, the presidents are out there saying, we need a trained workforce. Well, (laughs) since when, you know, why not just get... Good academic. I must say, I had an email from an educator, and he said that, you know, I've been around a long time. He said, the average, uh, he teaches university level, the average uh, college graduate in 2013 uh, doesn't have the education of a fourth grader, you know, back 40, 50 years ago. Absolutely. Well, Charlie, we're. we're We're out of time for today, but I really appreciate you uh, coming on. It's been a fascinating conversation. And I hope people will take a look at those resources that are coming up. Again, that's the booklet that is just coming back into print, Back to Basics Reform, or OBE, Scenarian International Curriculum, uh, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, and the trailer that's now on YouTube for Global Road to Ruin Through Education that's going to be released sometime in the fall, perhaps in September, according to that. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you much very for much. joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good, good evening. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's to sum it up in Charlotte's title, and that is the deliberate dumbing down of America. We want to think that schools are failing because they're just not, don't have enough funding or the techniques aren't quite right, but it was by design. It was deliberate that America was dumbed down in this education system. It's about social control. It's about government taking over control. They want people dumbed down. Everything in the media, from the time you turn on your television set, from the time you're a child, you're being trained. You're not being educated. And that training is still going on today. And that's the difference between the information we try to present here. We're trying to educate you. We're trying to pull pieces together. We're trying to go back into history. We're trying to pull together documents and facts that people aren't talking about to get you to critically think, to get you to educate yourself about what's happened, what's going on, what the purpose is. We're not trying to train you. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine 
of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states and the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.